So hello, my name is Pete Wassell, uh, founder of Augmate. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the role of uh, smart glasses within the IoT. And if, um, if I get a clicker here. OK, so um, the, the role of smart glasses within the IoT. So really, uh, I'm going to give the background of Industry 4.0 and IoT so that you get an understanding of the convergence of technologies and then uh, the role of smart glasses because it's one component of, of many. And really, on the edge of IoT uh, is where the humans interact with this technology and they do so with smart glasses. So these are some of the areas uh, that I'm going to touch on. I'm going to try to go quickly. Uh, we're we're going to re reserve uh, two minutes for Q&A, so I'm going to go fast. Um, but <laughs> um, basically, what I, what I want to say here is we looked at McKinsey, we looked at Gartner, we looked at Accenture, Juniper, we looked at all the market research companies to really determine uh, our strategy of, of what we wanted to do. And uh, that was the inspiration. We've synthesized that information, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, convey that to, to you. Okay, so a bit of a history lesson here. Uh, industry 4.0, why is it 4.0? So in the first industrial revolution, it was really the flow of water, right? The flow of steam. Uh, and it was typically companies churning out one product at a time. In the second industrial revolution, it was really the flow of electrons. So it was kind of Henry Ford model, assembly line, you're churning out more than one product you know, at a time. The third industrial revolution was all of that, uh, but plus automation. So really using robots to be able to churn things out even quicker. And you would kind of say at that point, wow, we've squeezed all the efficiency out of this that you could possibly ever get. But it's not true. In Industry 4.0, it's the flow of data in the flow of interconnectivity to be able to squeeze even more efficiency out of things. And I'll, I'll get into a little bit of that. When, we, when we, we look at this, you'll assume that Industry 4.0 is all about, uh, let's say, assembly and manufacturing. But this is really part of a value chain. So even before you get to this stage, there's the supply side, right? And then after this stage, there's kind of a support side. And even in those use cases, you can use smart glasses. Okay, so uh, birth of Industry 4.0 and the beginnings of IoT. So it was coined by um, a guy named Kevin Ashton at MIT, the Internet of Things. And really what happened in, in 2006 in Germany, they put out a paper called Industry 4.0. And it was all about marrying together science and industry in order to get more efficiency, more productivity, uh, and make the, the country better. So four years later, the Germany cabinet uh, took that paper and said, you know what, we need to get behind this. We want to support it you know, economically. And they put together a 10-year plan from 2010 to 2020 to implement Industry 4.0. So that's, that's really where it came from. So why now? Uh, a, couple, a couple things. If you look on the left-hand side, we've got um, inexpensive sensors, computing power, uh, large storage capacity. It's cheap storage capacity. You've got all this data that you're collecting, data analytics, and then the networking of all this technology. That's really the underpinnings, if you think about it in, in tiers, that support the different parts or components of Industry 4.0. So then on the other side, you see we've got augmented reality. We've got the cloud. Uh, we've got different kinds of, of networking and, and, and wearables. So when we looked at some of the research, uh, what some of the companies were saying, they had different reasons for thinking Industry 4.0 was really important. So when we talked to uh, McKinsey and company, um, they thought that you've got a whole generation of people who learned the smartphone and tablets, um, touch interfaces, voice interaction, those types of things, and said they're going to be a natural progression to move into these jobs uh, for Industry 4.0. Deloitte Digital, um, they thought that exponential technologies, and they cited specifically Google Glass, you can have any uh, smart glass there, but together the synergistic effect of all these exponential technologies really make up 4.0. Uh, Boston Consulting Group, they were looking at the use cases. Uh, one of their use cases was uh, like the augmented worker, like a, um, a technician, a remote maintenance kind of worker, and looking at the efficiency that they could gain from the data from Industry 4.0 and things like smart glasses. 
And then PricewaterhouseCoopers, they made some predictions on the volumes that you would see. And the number is pretty impressive. They put uh, 110 million deskless workers would be empowered uh, by augmented reality. Now, when I go to this chart, this is a, a Forrester chart uh, that you might have seen. I don't think it contradicts that past statement. Uh, this shows, even over the next five years, 8.8 .8 million smart classes uh, that'll be into the workforce, so in, into enterprise. Um, and what I liked about their research was they looked at 264 jobs that would benefit from the use of smart classes. So out of 10,000, 15,000 jobs, there's 264 that would really benefit significantly. Uh, and these are just US numbers. Um, that's why it's a, a fraction of the, uh, the, the previous numbers, but very compelling and very impressive. We looked at some of the IoT platforms as well. Um, in this Forrester study, uh, they looked at 11 different IoT platforms. So if we just look at the top three, uh, so for example, PTC was listed as being the, the best. So the furthest along, they had the most investment uh, into the technology, the most adoption. Um, they spent about a billion uh, on their investment in IoT. Uh, they bought ThingWorks, uh, a Philadelphia company, back in 2011, which was kind of the basis of their IoT platform. Uh, then they bought Vuforia in 2015, so definitely an AR uh, intersection to their technology. They put IBM on here. I, I think IBM Watson is more of a general purpose um, IoT platform, uh, but nonetheless, it can be used for a lot of different things. Uh, not just industry, they also target medical and you know, other, other kinds of industries. And then GE Predix. Um, GE put together their technology. You might remember when they made a statement that they were changing over to a software company, you know, General Electric. Uh, they put together their platform uh, called Predix as a way to support their own business units. Uh, some things on Industry 4.0. This came out of uh, McKinsey. So uh, companies that adopt Industry 4.0, uh, they're going to be looking at about 23% more uh, revenues, 26% uh, percent more productivity, uh, 30 to 50 percent less downtime, uh, 20 to 40 percent increases to machine life. Um, 80 percent of companies uh, believe that Industry 4.0 will affect their business model. So there's whole business models that are coming out of Industry 4.0. For example, um, companies will put equipment into their factory that they don't own. Someone else owns, uh, but then the data gets put onto the cloud, it gets analyzed on the cloud, it can be um, accessed from any place, like different kinds of models that you just wouldn't, wouldn't really expect. Um, NAC score. So these are, uh, this is by country. It's 55 indicators that uh, looks at the diffusion of the financial gains of implementing IoT, and it's by country. So when you look at this, you know, even if you took the top 10 countries, a lot of them are, are English speakers, that would be a great market to go after. Um, and by the way, you know, we encourage competition. We love everyone to get into this market. Uh, we've done a lot with education and all sorts of things for a number of years. And so we, we put it all out there for strategy and what we think makes sense as far as markets, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what to look at. When we look at this NAC score, you can see the numbers here, even for the US, which is the highest one, um, 64%. That means there's a lot of work to do to get to Industry 4.0. So again, if you've got an AR solution or a smart glass solution, Industry 4.0 uh, totally makes sense, the industrial IoT. Uh, and by the way, that was a uh, uh, report from Accenture and, and Frontier. Uh, this is some statistics out of Vuzix. Um, six times productivity for IR, uh, wireframe layout. Uh, Jake could probably attest to that. Efficiency in the warehouse, uh, 25%. $20 return on investment for every dollar spent with uh, field technicians. And then about a 44% improvement on accuracy, depending on the use case. Uh, so some pretty statistic, uh, uh, significant ROI. When we look at some of our partners, for example, Ubimax uh, with, with their pick and pack solution, uh, lowest number of errors and the fastest time when using smart glasses compared to other kind of picking mechanisms. Right? So this, when we're talking about manufacturing and assembly, before that, when you get to the supply side, or even after, when you start manufacturing products, uh, pick and pack, supply chain operations, a great fit for, for smart classes. Um, Procedix, um, tractor inspection, went from 100 minutes down to 70 minutes, um, you know, significant, and the elimination of paper. Uh, so the technology obviously solves problems. Um, you know, IoT and Industry 4.0 is all about the efficient um, production of, of products. 
this particular use case from Boston Consulting Group uh, talks about the um, mobile worker, the mobile technician. And if you could see the gray dotted line, that's kind of like a, a shift uh, for a particular day. It starts at 6 a.m. and goes to, to 3 p.m. And beneath that timeline is uh, the benefits of having the data in advance, which you can through Industry 4.0, using things like uh, smart glasses. And then the top bar is the traditional method. So by using these new technologies, they're finding that uh, you could do perhaps two or three times the jobs that you could in the traditional method. Typically, someone that was going to um, you know, fix something on site, they're going to the site, they're talking to the workers, they're collecting data, they're just wasting a whole bunch of time where so much can be done in, in different ways using this latest technology. Um, so market opportunity, uh, by 2020, it's something like uh, 500 billion, uh, generally speaking. There's a lot of different numbers on, on this chart. Um, by 2030, it's, it's upwards of 15 trillion. So uh, I think a huge market, huge opportunity, um, you know, something definitely to, to go after. So some people say, will the industrial IoT, will that kill jobs? Um, well, uh, Accenture said that 87% of the people that they surveyed said that it's going to be an increase of jobs. Um, Boston Consulting Group, who was on the previous chart, they said in Germany alone would have an increase of 350,000 jobs. Now, when they look at things like robotics and automation, um, you know, it's going to decrease jobs, but new jobs come into play. So data scientists, like with all this data that's collected from sensors and off of the equipment and, and machinery, someone has to curate it. Someone has to put it together and prepare it for other workers who are going to be doing uh, repair and, you know, fixing, fixing the machines. Okay, and so just to augment real quick what we do, um, we've got uh, an infrastructure platform. We do the device management, policy management, um, security, over-the-air updates to smart glasses. We've got eight different smart glasses on our platform. We started as a, uh, a cloud-based uh, system, but there's been a number of companies that have asked us to go on-prem, and so we load up our platform on IoT gateways, and we ship them with three smart glasses uh, for companies to do pilots. So it's just an easy way. It comes with one use case, depending on what the company is looking to pilot, uh, and it's a way to kind of seed the market with IoT and, and wearables. Um, so that's really what we're about. Uh, I'm Pete Wassell. I'm the founder of Augmate. If you had maybe one question or if you want to use the app to submit questions, you can go right ahead. Thanks, Pete. Thank you.